Hi, Chuck Tomasi again with another Did You Know video. This time I've got not one, but two ways you can quickly display a form with pre-populated fields, even dynamic values. And no, I'm not talking about dictionary default values. Before I go on, just a quick reminder to click like on this video if you find it helpful and subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss anything good. Okay, back to our main topic. To start, have you ever noticed when you create a new record from a related list that the link back to the parent record is pre-populated? Pretty nice, right? This is made possible because the same query that makes the related list is used to pre-populate the field. Let's take a look at an example. When we look at this problem record, we can see it has several incidents related to it. That's because the incident table has a reference field to the problem table and the value for that field on all these records is this problem. To make this list, the system is simply checking which incidents have PRB11 in the problem field. We can see this at the top of the related list, right here. And when we right click on that query and select open new window, we get a new browser tab with the same list with the same query. And notice something else. When we click new, the problem field on the incident already knows to link to PRB11. That's because of a URL parameter called sysparm underscore query. Did you know you can take advantage of the sysparm query parameter to not only filter records, you can use it to also pre-populate fields. If we look closely at the URL, we can see sysparm query equals problem ID percent 3D and a sys ID. I know, not the easiest to read, but it says populate the problem ID field with the sys ID of PRB11. The percent 3D is simply an encoded version of the equal sign, so it doesn't get confused as a URL parameter. It's that same sysparm query on the URL that tells the system what fields and values to populate on the new record. That's how the problem field gets populated. Sysparm query does two things. For lists, it filters. For a form, it populates fields. Let's try a simple example of our own. Back on our incident list, let's create a simple query where channel is walk-in. We get our list as expected from the filter operation. And when we click new, the new record automatically has channel filled in. Why is this useful? Well, how about this? Let's say we want to make a new module in our navigation menu. So when somebody walks up to our desk with an incident, we click one thing and the form is already open with the channel set to walk in. To do that, we'll right click on the breadcrumb and copy the URL. Now we'll create a new module. And yes, there are lots of ways to do this. For this example, we'll edit the incident app menu, go down to the modules related list, and click new. In the new module form, notice how the application menu has incident already populated. Now we know how that happens. Sysparm query. Let's finish filling in the form. We'll call our new module new walk -in. Order 1000, and in the link type section, we'll pick URL from arguments, then paste in our URL from before. We still need to make a few adjustments to the URL. First, we'll remove the instance name up through .com so that this URL works on other instances like our dev, test, and prod. Next, we get rid of underscore list so the system opens a form and not a list. And after the question mark, we'll tell the system to create a new record by putting in sysid equals minus one and an ampersand to separate the URL parameters sysid from sysparm query. Next, we remove the sysparm view parameter altogether. And finally, submit. Let's test it out by going to the all menu, type walk in the filter, and there's our new module. And when we click it, we get a new record with the channel pre-populated. Now, if we want to pre-populate more fields, we can add those to sysparm query in the same way by building the filter and replacing the sysparm query in our module. Here's one that pre-populates the assigned to field as a dynamic value of me. Sysparm query is a great way to pre-populate strings, numbers, choice fields, reference fields, and several others. 
You can even hack a read-only field to take on a value in a new record. However, it doesn't do well on fields like calculated or lookup fields, like priority. The initial value may look fine until the system does a calculation or lookup and replaces our value. You'll find it also doesn't do well on fields like state in the task tables that have logic driving the default value. And it won't work on fields that don't use the is operator, like list and date fields. If the sysparm query doesn't have an equals, as noted with the percent %3D, then the form won't be able to assign a value. Consider using sysparm query in modules, UI actions, interceptors, and other places you can navigate to a record with a URL. Now, as a bonus, if you find you're setting more than, say, three or four default values, you may want to consider predefining the values in a template and using sysparm under template to manage the field value pairs easier. Let's convert our previous example to a template. First, we'll start by navigating to all system definition templates and creating a new template. We'll give it a name, select the incident table, and make it global so everyone can use it. Then we'll give it a short description. Now, when we set fields, we'll set the channel to walk in, and the dynamic assigned to is entered as JavaScript colon GS dot get user ID. This is taken right from the dynamic filter option. Now, I won't get into all the details of the JavaScript colon options here, but it offers some flexible ways to do things like dates, call script includes, and more. Documentation for dynamic filter options is available on the doc site, and I'll include a link in the description for this video. Now, just for fun, let's add an additional comment to tell this template apart from our previous example. We'll then save the record and copy the name. Next, we'll modify the argument field in our walk-in module, replacing sysparm under query with sysparm underscore template equals and the name of our template. Let's test it out. There's the new record with the values we set in the template, including the additional comment. Even better, if we need to modify any of the field value pairs, we don't need to change the module like we would with sysparm query. We can quickly modify the template anytime we need. And as long as the template name stays the same, our module continues to work with the new values. Now, one word of caution. Avoid characters in your template name that could cause conflict with the URL, like question mark, ampersand, and equals. There you go. A couple of different ways to pre-populate fields on a form quickly using sysparm query and sysparm template. I hope you find new and creative ways to use them in your system. Don't forget, if you've got a tip or a trick that you want to share in a blog, video, or whatever, be sure to use the hashtag ServiceNowDYK to be part of the community. I've seen some great stuff already, and I look forward to more. Thanks for watching.